Um, but what I have found is if you're going to engage men, specifically senior men, it's a head and heart conversation. Different people have different approaches. You're going to hear those all throughout the day. But my belief is it's about an 80% head and about a 20% heart. So 80% of this presentation is going to be head focused. And I'm going to wrap up with the 20% that's heart focused. When you talk to senior leaders around advancing women, I always start with what's keeping you up at night? What are your three burning business issues? And have you even thought that women are the solution to one of your biggest business problems? There's a quote I love to share from A.G. Laffley, and it talks about business today. And I'll let you read it as you want. But what it says is business is really tough. As a leader, I'm trying to drive, if I'm lucky, 6 to 8% top line growth. Yet I still have to drive double digit operating profit. And so this becomes really, really challenging. You know, it's not the early 2000s. Business today is still tough. And so how do you drive operating profit and efficiency while leveraging the unique aspects of diversity? So how do you put that in business terms? And here's the two biggest constituents group we have to buy, get buy-in from. This just came out in January. It's a Mercer report that looks at the engagement levels of men and middle management. This, these are global numbers, over 500 companies in 40 countries, 3.2 million employees were asked about their commitment to DNI. And we only see a 38 and a 39% engagement level. So we've got to go back and engage men. And we've got to go back and talk to middle managers. These are the people who drive the organization. And they need to totally see how this all connects. And then the other question I get a lot is, oh, god, Jeff, it's 2016. Why are we still having this gender conversation? Well, there's a concept that many of you are familiar with. It's called corporate gender fatigue. Leaders look around the organization see a lot of women and think we're doing a pretty good job, when in fact the numbers don't bear that out. 56% of men versus 39% of women think women have made considerable progress in the last 10 years. And not to throw my male brethren under the bus, but of course men would think we're doing a better job than we really are, right? And when you ask them why, 58% of men say it's because we've been working harder. Pat yourselves on the back, senior leadership. We've really been trying to do this women's thing, and it's working out. And women are saying, no, no, no. It's because I'm working harder. I'm performing better. I'm getting better educational credentials. So the genders are, in fact, having different experiences at work, and we're not talking about them. But here's the alarming one. 49%, literally one out of two women, think gender bias is still alive in organizations versus about one in four men. So this says women are having significantly different experiences in the workplace than men are, and we've got to talk about it. And we've got to take it back and figure out. I was working with a client last week. This was a, a you know, pretty successful Fortune 100 company. I was working with their women in R&D. The majority of these women had PhDs in biochem, really bright, smart women. And I told them, I'm going to go see your senior leadership team for lunch. What don't they know? If I, if I could say six things to them that they have no idea is going on, what would those be? And within 30 minutes, these women gave me six things that as business leaders, you would be appalled at. And I went and had lunch with their senior leadership. And I said, hey, I spent 30 minutes with your women. Here's what they had to say they're experiencing. And after the usual, yeah, but the, 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 they kind of sat there and go, oh my gosh, we have a responsibility to change this. This is why we need to have this dialogue. This is why we need to have men engaged in this dialogue. Because we are still leadership, and most of us are still sitting in significant roles. So the key to male engagement is critical. When I talk to men, and I'm a business person, I use business terms. There are only four reasons to do an integrated women's leadership strategy, to grow revenue, to improve operating profit, to enhance company reputation, and it's what great companies do. I've never seen a senior leader stand up in his organization and go, we want to be a good company to work for. Who wants to work for that guy? 
or that lady, right? It's what great companies do. It's how you create competitive advantage. And we're going to talk about that from a talent standpoint. Let me tell you what it's not. It's not a journey. I've worked in DNI for 15 years. And it drives me crazy when my brothers and sisters who I love in DNI say, our company's on a diversity journey. I was in sales for 20 years. I never went on a sales journey. <laughs> if you didn't make your quota every quarter, they fired you. Oh, but yet DNI, well, we can't measure that. We can't track that. It might be discoverable, blah, 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 every excuse in the world. We track everything possible in organizations except the advancement of women and minorities. This is just stupid and it makes no sense. So, oh, thank you. So change your dialogue. It's not a journey. It's not a nice thing to do. It's not a women's thing to do. And it's not a men lose, women win. This is, and we're going to spend a lot of time and, and, and rate, you know, kind of teed up male cultural bias. Most men walk around with the belief that if I'm advocating for women, men must be being left behind. I work with Catalyst award-winning companies. And what I will tell you is, even in the most progressive companies in this country, two out of three promotions are still going to men. And in most companies, it's three out of four or seven out of eight. And the reason you don't know this is no one will tell you what their numbers are, because quite frankly, they're a little embarrassed about them. I was thrilled this summer when technology, and, and you guys are really the leading edge out here, published your numbers. That is a great first step, because without numbers, we can't track and we can't be successful. But realize that as you go back and talk to other men, I'm carrying a stigma that says, well, you know, if I'm doing this women's thing, I must be hurting my male counterparts, when in fact, that's just not the case. The numbers don't bear it out. So let's jump into this, and this is my, this is my meat, right? This is what we need to talk to middle managers about. So I get it. What do you want me to do now, Jeff? So the first thing you've got to do is talk about your business case every day. And it's going to sound like old news after a while. But here's the problem. I'm going to throw some numbers out later. Women are $7 trillion in this country. Well, if I'm a middle manager in a department in a Fortune 250 company, that doesn't mean anything to me. So I need a business case at my level that I can talk about and understand and have accountability for. Then I can start to manage talent differently. Then I can start to ask tough questions and hold people accountable. The next one is deepen your cultural competency. This says I have to go and talk to people <clears throat> that I don't share common traits with and get to know them. And so how do you go out and have this conversation? How do you deepen your cultural competency? You guys are experts on that. And then finally, what are symbolic gestures and systemic changes? How do you become a champion? And so I'm going to close with that. So the business case, I like to keep things simple. Your numbers are going to be different, but you've got to plug these in for your company. But I'm going to give you some examples that I think are really interesting. And I call it the 80-80-80. The first 80 is revenue. The middle 80 is talent, and the third 80 is engagement. These are three things every business leader is interested in. So the first 80 is revenue. Very slow. OK, there we go. You all know this, but the numbers are jaw-dropping. Women in the US buy or influence literally everything bought or sold in this country. 83% of everything bought and sold in the non-B2B setting is done by women.